Since its release in September 2020, Genshin Impact has committed itself to releasing a new update every six weeks. Updates include their own special limited time events players can participate in and earn rewards. Events come in all sorts of varieties. There are story-related ones, where we learn more about the world and characters, such as in Update 1.2's Chalk Prince and the Dragon event. There are also pure combat-focused ones, where we challenge enemies under various scenarios, debuffs, and blessings. Examples include the Hypostatic Symphony event and the Legend of the Vagabond event. Some events have a festive theme to them, where we participate in mini-games related to whatever festival is going on at the time. An example is the Invitation to Windbloom event, where we played in games and activities in Mondstadt's Windbloom Festival. Another is Liya's annual Lantern Rite Festival, which first featured the Theater Mechanicus event. There are many more types of events, and while I enjoy all of them, there are a few that really do stand out for their uniqueness. I think of the Windbloom activities and the Theater Mechanicus event as some of the more unique ones. Another one that really stands out to me is one that was first introduced in Update 1.5, Wind Trace. Wind Trace is essentially a co-op hide-and-seek event. It's the first event Genshin has introduced, where instead of the typical PvE style of events, Wind Trace essentially is PvP, where the results are decided by interactions between players. One player is the Hunter, while the others are Rebels. The Hunter has enhanced movement speed and looks to capture all of the Rebels, who try to use their powers of disguise to avoid capture. At first glance, this looks relatively simple for both parties. Hunters would just run around, using their capture techniques to find and capture Rebels. The Rebels would choose between objects to disguise as, and try to find some hidden spot on the map to hide. But fortunately, that's not all there is to Wintrace. One of the aspects that makes Wintrace so great is that it gives players many options to show off their creativity. Instead of just staying hidden somewhere, Rebels can also try moving from location to location, seeking to take advantage of hunters who do not go back to places they've already cleared. One common tactic involves the transparency windward art, where a rebel could mislead a hunter into chasing them in one direction, only to juke them with transparency, confusing the hunter. Perhaps even more interesting, rebels can simply try their luck with just standing still with their character, trying to blend into their background, hoping to use this obvious exposure as some psychological trick. Surely, standing out in the open in a hide-and-seek event won't work, right? Funnily enough, common attempts from rebels are those who play as either Barbara or Albedo on the Dawn Winery map and try to appear as NPCs because their clothing fits in with the map. Or perhaps at the Kamisato estate, we see someone like Ayaka just casually pacing back and forth, because it seems like a natural thing for her to do at her home. While most hunters sniff this out, it is still very satisfying and entertaining when rebels are able to pull this off, as if they've mastered the ability of appearing so incredibly natural that they become invisible to the hunter's eyes. A hunter may or may not notice these tricks, but those who do could also pretend that they don't notice these tricks, adding an additional layer of mind games, where rebels could develop a false sense of security in their supposed safe space. Or perhaps a hunter might play with the rebel, just to see how the rebel may react. There's the additional feature where we can chat with each other during the game, which adds more layers of uniqueness. There could be cooperation among rebels, or even betrayal. Players can express sadness when rebels are caught, encouraging the remaining ones to continue avoidance. Games can also turn into ones that break the fourth wall, where people don't exactly play, but just sit amongst each other to chat. In the lobby, players may choose their characters based on the current map, or other players, to match whatever situation might be happening. These many possibilities coming together just make for a limitless amount of funny, creative, and wholesome moments between players. The PvP aspect of this low-stakes event just seems to create an atmosphere between players that just feels fitting and proper for Genshin. Another reason that I find Wind Trace to be a great event is that it utilizes various areas in the game. 
Tevet is a place filled with all kinds of places to explore. Areas have a variety of atmospheres to them, including ones filled with mystery, danger, sadness, happiness, beauty, and all other kinds. Though as with most RPGs, some areas in a world do not have much incentive to go back to them after players have explored them, which can be a shame because so many wonderful areas are no longer visited again, especially the areas that were explored by players early on in the game. But one of Windtrace's charms is that it utilizes various areas of the map. It puts players into these areas that may be forgotten, and players are able to interact with the maps once again, invoking senses of nostalgia. As they try to think of routes, hiding spots, and general atmosphere on these maps, they grow more appreciative of traits of areas they haven't noticed before. I don't often, if at all, think of climbing the Kamisato estate, but my goodness does it have a nice view of Inazuma City. I didn't realize just how many scarecrows Chinksa Village has, or just how nice it looks to wander around the myriad of flowers while spectating a hunter chasing a rebel. Rito Harbor really can feel like a maze sometimes, but it is teeming with life and details. And something about seeing random objects like barrels and chairs moving around and hiding in obscure locations amuses me to no end. All in all, map replayability is important. It's wonderful that Windtrace gives players reasons and options to revisit areas that they now appreciate more as a result. While I've touched on aspects of what makes Windtrace great, there are also improvements that I think would be great to have. To add on to the map replayability aspect, I think it would be spectacular if Windtrace became a permanent addition into a player's Serena teapot. The Serena teapot has shown just how creative many players are, and I can only imagine how amazing it would be to play Windtrace in many different customized worlds. There are many more improvements that can be done, but I think adding Windtrace to our teapots would be a fantastic feature. All that said, I appreciate that MiHoYo brought Windtrace back in Update 2.4. It's clear to me that they know players enjoy the event, and I believe they do want to improve on the event, and perhaps apply elements from it to other aspects of the game. Genshin has a lot of fun events, but Windtrace has such a unique flavor to it that makes it memorable for a lot of players. And I think MiHoYo should continue building on top of the enjoyment that Windtrace brings. It's because activities like Windtrace that promote and incentivize creativity helps so much to give more replayability and longevity to the wonderful world in Genshin Impact.